Myanmar, a country with abundant water resources, minerals and forests, has pretty much been isolated from the rest of the world for nearly half a century. In the past decade, however, the country has opened up. Myanmar's primary exports include agricultural products such as rice, as well as gems and natural gas. In recent years, a new commodity has emerged, gaining in popularity and global demand. Hair, which is associated with Buddhism and feminine identity, has become a significant export product from Myanmar. In a bustling and busy market, a group of women gather in a small shed. One of them sits in front of a mirror, watching as a sharp pair of scissors slices through her locks, transforming her once long hair into a somewhat shorter style. The result of the haircut evokes a range of emotions among those present. Some smile contentedly, while others remain quiet, and a few even shed tears. Scientifically, hair is composed of dead cells that have fused together to create lengthy strands. The real function of the hair is to protect the scalp. Throughout the history of mankind, however, hair has been more important than being merely a protection. It's an indicator of status, a representation of image or identity, or even a symbolic element. A prevalent belief in Eastern cultures is that the head and the hair are sacred entities. For Burmese women, hair holds great significance, as it is regarded as a sacred element that embodies their religious beliefs, beauty, feminine pride and dignity. Yet a significant number of women are willing to sacrifice their hair to support their families and improve their livelihoods. Like this young woman. <laughs> You have baby. Modernity has not resulted in any transformation of their lifestyle. Longyi, a traditional sarong-like tube of fabric, is still commonly worn by both genders. Although some people opt for modern jeans and t-shirts, traditional attire remains prevalent in Myanmar. Myanmar has witnessed a rise in the number of motorcycles and cars on its roads. The country also imports a wide range of consumer goods. Alongside the thriving hair industry, hair shops are scattered throughout Myanmar, similar to beauty salons or other shops that can be found in local neighborhoods. Man Yen has been running a hair shop in this market for a long time. Her clients are young women employed in factories who reside in the adjacent towns. Her clients are selling their hair for diverse reasons, covering rent, taking care of children, or when performing acts of merit. The Burmese people hold a profound belief in Buddhism and many women are willing to offer something as valuable as their hair to earn money for merit-making. In certain instances, tens of thousands of women trim their locks and sell them to finance the construction of temples, roads or bridges. <laughs>
Ma Nian skillfully measures the length of the hair and then negotiates a price. If the buyer and seller agree on a price, the hair will be cut. After the hair has been cut, it will be carefully weighed on the same fine ancient scales used to weigh gold. Their hair is precious like gold. The girls who've come to sell their hair today have earned between 60 and 80 US dollars each. In a nation where the minimum wage is below 3 US dollars, this amount of money is significant. How much is it, this one? This is 90 dollars. It's beautiful, no? It's expensive because it's, it's long and beautiful, right? Oh, wow. The smile reflected in the cracked mirror also reflects confidence in this haircut. While this young woman is still sobbing. Whether crying or feeling confident, they leave the salon not only with a new haircut, but also with enough money to survive for days or even months. If you want to see more great content from all over the world, please like the video, subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. Thank you. Myanmar's women are renowned for their smooth skin and lustrous hair. They achieve this by using local herbs to wash their hair and applying virgin coconut oil to nourish it. With this hair care routine, it becomes glossy and tangle-free. Unprocessed hair, which has not been subjected to heat or chemicals, is highly sought after in the beauty industry worldwide, particularly for wigs and hair extensions. Myanmar's hair export industry has experienced rapid growth, currently ranking third in the world behind India and Tunisia. Hair collected from the salons or markets we've seen is eventually sold to factories for processing. There are dozens of factories that purchase, process and export hair, and this is just one of them. The owner of this factory, Minzor U, has been in the hair industry for over a decade. He was inspired to start his business by an Israeli tourist who he met while working as a tour guide. He suggests, because he saw long hair girls in Myanmar, in the restaurant receptionist, girls with very nice long hair, and he, he have happy to suggest that, oh, Minzo, you can make this mess, can be rich like that. <laughs> For nearly a decade, he has been involved in the hair export industry, which has now expanded to include several factories and hundreds of employees. The work here is done entirely by hand. The silky and lustrous hair of Burmese women is highly sought after. As we were speaking to the factory's owner, there were several phone calls regarding business negotiations and orders. My India friend. Your Indian friend, just call you. Live, live in my house. Ah, in the... He sell his hair, voice hair board. Uh -huh. He also bring his uh, process hair. So he want to make a judgment according to quality. Who likes, who come to Myanmar and likes the price and the quality too much. The process of making wigs from human hair starts with washing and sterilizing the hair, which is then left to dry. Natural methods of drying, such as exposure to the sun and air drying, are used exclusively. Once the hair is completely dry, it's divided into strands by combing it by hand with a large brush-like tool that is fixed to a table. Any imperfections in the hair are brushed away, leaving only straight, trimmed strands of uniform length. After that, the workers examine the hair once more, using their eyes and hands to screen for any white hairs or other defects. The clean and well-combed hair strands are then processed into a variety of wigs and hair pieces, which could be styled in a multitude of ways, including short or long, straight or curly, and dyed in an array of colors. 
The most popular product is the wavy hair wig, which can be achieved through natural or artificial means. Hair from Myanmar is renowned for its purity, which is a key factor in producing high-quality wavy hair. To create curls naturally, workers use their hands to wrap bundles of hair tightly around wooden shafts, which are then steamed to set the curls. The factory produces a variety of hair products, including pre-made wigs that can be worn immediately and hair pieces or bundles that can be styled in numerous ways. These products are exported worldwide, enabling people all over the world to access high quality hair. For those looking for a quick hair transformation, wigs are an excellent option, offering a variety of styles to choose from. Hair pieces, on the other hand, are ideal for those looking to add more volume, length or curl to their existing hair. The most desirable and highly prized hair on the market is called virgin hair. Virgin hair is characterized by its cleanliness, absence of impurities or pollutants with a fine, smooth and strong texture. It's highly valued in the market with a single bundle costing more than 200 US dollars and sometimes fetching as much as 400, depending on its length and weight. Nowadays, hair of this quality is extremely rare. The growing demand for human hair to supply the global beauty market has resulted in almost all types of hair selling out. Even hair fragments left over from combing are now being collected and sold as hair is becoming more challenging to find. Using these hair scraps to create wigs and hair pieces might take longer and results in a shorter lifespan, but they are still valuable and can be sold to meet demand. Although the hair business is thriving, many Burmese women insist on keeping their long hair. On the streets, they're dressed in colorful traditional costumes. Their faces are covered with skin-nourishing herbs like tanaka. Their hair is tied at the nape of the neck or spreads across the back. Piu Piu keeps her hair neat and tidy in the old-fashioned way. We had no idea how long it was until she let it loose. อ๋อสบายจริงๆเงินเนี่ยไอ้สบายชื่อตะบอจ่าตะเมียสบายชื่อทาดาวเมียไปแล้วไอ้ตะบอจ่าเราบ่เนาะเงินเนี่ยอเ
Today, many Burmese women still choose to keep their long hair as a tradition. Younger generations in larger cities, such as Yangon and Mandalay, have, however, begun to experiment with shorter hairdos, perms and dyed hair. As the demand for virgin hair in the global market continues to grow, it's becoming more and more difficult to find. For example, China company, some company want every man 20,000 kilograms. Actually, Myanmar has every man can have only 2,000, 3,000 kilograms. That is a maximum uh, available. But the man only <laughs> some battery from China uh, 30,000 kilogram, very big. Uh, <laughs> With a dwindling supply of hair to meet market demand in major cities, hair buyers are now traveling to remote areas and villages outside the city, where women still have long, pure hair. Women in longi and long-sleeved shirts have small baskets on their arms and walk along the village path. In the baskets are razor-sharp scissors, a scale, and bags to collect hair. At the crossroads, they split up to go about their work. Their profession is purchasing hair from villagers. They walk around calling out, is anyone selling hair? If someone shows interest, they will enter their house to inspect the quality of the hair and agree on a price before proceeding with the haircut. Unfortunately, while we followed, Nobody wanted to sell their hair. According to the merchant, the women in this village may have recently sold their hair, making it unlikely that it was long enough to sell again. It takes around three years to grow shoulder-length hair, and at least five years for hair to reach mid-back length. The purchased hair must be at least 18 inches long, or the price will be lower. As a result, the only hair available for sale in the village today is that which has fallen out during washing. This is a hair transaction between a buyer and an elderly lady. There was some bargaining over the price. In the end, the buyer declined to buy the woman's hair, citing that $3 was too much to pay for grey hair that was already falling out. That I got hair is, let's say, no enough. Not enough. No enough. That is why falling waste hair process a treatment, making and use it as um, secondary hair. <laughs> As the demand for virgin hair continues to grow, buyers are compelled to venture further in search of it, leading to heightened competition. The exceptional quality and allure of hair from Myanmar have enticed many entrepreneurs from India and China to invest in constructing factories to process and export the hair. Consequently, Myanmar has emerged as a leading hub for the purchase and accumulation of hair in the region. In Myanmar, there is a traditional axiom that equates a man's strength with his muscles and a woman's strength with her hair. Despite Myanmar's modernization and engagement in foreign trade, Many women in the country still possess long hair, just as they did in the past. Nowadays, however, their hair's strength and beauty can be transformed into monetary value. While modern technology allows for the production of various materials for wigs and hair pieces, virgin hair, which is natural hair, remains irreplaceable. <laughs>